In fact, let's continue with our coverage around the first day of the metric exam finals and take stock of the sentiments of at least one teacher union during this milestone. Basil Manuel is the executive director of the National Professional Teachers Organization of South Africa and joins us now via our video link. Uh, Basil, great to see you as always. Thanks very much indeed for making time to speak to the SABC as always. And so here we are, years in the making, some people might say. Uh, the official bell has been rung. Many of these metric finals have officially put uh, pen to paper. And in many ways, this is really out of your hands. So perhaps let me just get a sense of how are you feeling now that we're here? Uh, good morning, uh, Yanda, and, and thanks for having me. Yes, um, teachers have done their job now, and I know there are still some last minute pushes and one or two little classes, particularly with the maths and science, where there have been some concerns. But now we leave it up to the learner. And of course, we, we have done what we should do. And we believe that even though this is part of that COVID cohort, remember these were grade eights during COVID, and they had the part-time classes, etc. So a lot has been done with these learners to ready them for this moment. And we believe our job is done and they are ready. Yeah, look, the president seems upbeat, so no pressure to teachers and pupils, um, but I'm sure it's all coming from a good place. <laughs> look, you know, at the time when COVID, when we were really starting to take stock of the impact of the pandemic, we were told it would take as many as five years to get back to where we were before that health crisis. And I wonder to what extent you reckon we are now finally starting to turn the page, excuse the pun, um, and, you know, really getting back to those times where the disruption isn't felt in the curriculum as I'm sure it was during COVID-19. Ayanda, I think we must separate a few things. The, one of the concerns was not about the book knowledge that, and, and, and the content that we teach in the higher classes, but it was about foundational knowledge and the lag in foundational knowledge. And I think in a large measure, there are still uh, parts of that foundational knowledge that we have to catch up on. But with the learners that can read, can write, have mastered the basics, catch up it a little quicker. And and so with the content subjects, more has been done. We know the department has had and various districts and various provinces have had uh, after school classes, holiday classes, weekend classes. And whilst not, that is not an ideal situation, it's a necessary situation when one has to deal with the aftermath of something like COVID, where there are deficits, where there are huge chunks you have to catch up. Just think about a subject like mathematics or geography where one one year builds on the next year mm. and if you don't if you haven't covered the entire syllabus the previous year those deficits will show it's those things that those extra classes have had to do so yes we believe we're ready but we also acknowledge the amount of work teachers have had to put in teachers all over the country have spent a lot of extra time in the last couple of years just to ready uh, learners for for the metric exam yeah, and you know, COVID-19 has completely changed how many things are done. My goodness, my own job has changed dramatically. I mean, in the past, you'd have to be in studio for us to have this conversation. And here we are normalizing things like our video links. So I wonder to what extent that's also happened for the classroom, you know, given the years that have passed. And now that we're able to kind of take stock of what feels like a milestone for this cohort in particular, to what extent do you reckon teachers are now doing things differently? I think we've seen a lot of it more a lot more innovation in terms of the electronic forms of innovation where access to lessons that are on YouTube, et cetera, is the order of the day, particularly if a school doesn't have access to a full science laboratory and the like. But I think by and large, because of the financial crunch mm -hmm. that we seem to be in, we haven't seen the progress that we as NAPTOSA would particularly would have liked to see in our schools, given that the world is moving so fast ahead with ICTs, but it will come. And we can see already how much more learners are accessing on their own, how much with, with good guidance they can access on the internet, through uh, various social media platforms and so on. So the world has changed. Learners know more and can access more. And it will change more as things settle down.
Yeah, these are certainly the digital natives. Speaking about ICT, there's been a lot of talk around e-marking, and I'm not quite sure what that actually means. I presume it would work mm -hmm. in the context of things like multiple choice exam papers. I mean, is this something that you as Naptosa would back? I mean, uh, one of the concerns, for example, is how efficient something like that would be. Let me correct something, Ayanda. First of all, we are in a pilot phase and it's only in KZN. Right. And, sorry, only in Gauteng. And then secondly, uh, we are talking about the numerically based subjects, accounting and mathematics. And uh, the, the pilot is in accounting and paper one of mathematics. So it is a much easier one to adapt to uh, online marking. And it doesn't mean that there's no teacher marking. No, the teacher is marking, but the script has been uploaded and it is being marked electronically with some aid from the parameters that have been set. But what is exciting is all the time saving that goes with it. Even the diagnostics of the very paper being marked uh, is done immediately. And we can then pick up in a very short space of time where the difficult areas are in a particular particular subject where teachers need to spend more time on or maybe teachers themselves need training in. So yes, we welcome it. But of course, it's a slow progress and it has its limitations. And at the moment, those limitations are that it is for the numerically based subjects. Right. And I suppose it's a good place to start because numbers are hopefully not really that sentimental, right? It's either right or wrong. It's you get what I mean. Um, but <laughs> yes. yeah, you know, I, I, the, the other concern, I suppose, that's come up during this time, as is the case every year, is things around irregularities. I heard the basic education minister yesterday spending quite some time addressing things like cheating. I, I mean, I don't remember any year where there wasn't some kind of fault in the system. And um, I wonder how worried you are about that this time around, given the fact that this seems like an inevitability in some cases. Ayanda, at first, the exam section in, in, in the DBE has, is a well-oiled machine, and there are many, many parts to this machine, and most of them are working extremely smoothly. When it comes to irregularities, etc., we are dependent on people. And because we are dependent on people either in the batching of scripts, either in the transportation, or even in the marking, and so on. And then, of course, learners get enticed into it. So that is where the biggest concern lies. In our briefing on Friday with the Director General and the Department of Education about readiness, and, and our concerns, which include this, uh, we were given the assurance that there are sufficient monitors, that checks and balances, even in the printing works, et cetera, have been upgraded. And we saw that last year and the year before. But of course, we work with people. And part of that is that we have to trust in the integrity of people, even though so much has been done to ensure that nothing can go wrong. You and I both know, um, um, there's always space for some crookedness to creep in. And we certainly hope that uh, the exam itself doesn't get cheapened by something like this. It's a high stakes exam. It's, a, it's an exam that allows access to so much and not having that certificate also means so much. So what we need to see that nobody uh, detracts from the quality of this exam and the integrity of this examination. Absolutely. That really is what uh, is most important, I imagine, for those of us who watch these exams and, uh, of course, those of you who are involved in the process leading up to these exams. So uh, we'll certainly be keeping that top of mind. But Basil Manuel, for now, thanks very much indeed for speaking to us. Appreciate your time as always. Uh, Basil is the Executive Director with the National Professional Teachers Organization of South Africa. That, of course, is NAPTOSA.